Hello and welcome to the PropTech Hot Seat on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we explore trends and technologies driving innovation across the built environment. The show is brought to you in partnership with PropTech Ireland, the hub for innovators, investors and indeed for industry leaders. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Devitt, founder of Mark and recent winner of the Student Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Aaron, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me, Carol. I'm a big fan of yourself and all the hard work that Katie and I probably, the whole I property team does. Uh, well, do you know what? I, I can tell you categorically, I'm a fan of yours as well. We've been watching what you've been doing for a while. And um, I think it's really exciting because actually in the prop tech space in Ireland, we've had a bit of a slow burn in terms of new founders coming in and new uh, new innovations coming into the market. And it has been actually I, I can't point to another Irish prop tech startup who has maybe achieved the same level of market traction that you have in the same length of time. And I think that's really interesting for about you as a founder, about the offering of the company, but also about the readiness of the market. So ty- timing is everything. And we're yeah. going to talk about that today. But for anybody who isn't familiar, tell us a little bit uh, before we get on to learning about Mark and what you and the team are doing. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be addressing these problems. 100%. Um, so, yeah, obviously, uh, we've been working on Mark for uh, over a year and a half now. Um, Mark was born as a result of my mom, my three younger siblings who were renting in December of 2022. They received, they had no heat for over a week and received close to zero communication. They would have uh, made lots of phone calls, sent lots of emails, fill out request forms. At the time, I was working part time with college at a gym at a front desk, and uh, every time a tenant came in, I had to turn my laptop around. And I said, "Are you are you renting?" And I said, "Yes." And I said, "Have you ever had any these problems?" Or tell me your problems. And also, yes. And it all seemed to revolve around communication. I was like, "This is really interesting." I got to about seventy tenants, and uh, I had to had to stop or or I get fired. But <laughs> so then I was like, "This is really interesting. What's it like for the property managers?" And I learned that like the most overwhelming and time consuming part of their job is the repetitive back and forth. Uh, communications with tenants, landlords, and contractors. And if you can imagine, if you manage hundreds or thousands of properties, that like the biggest part of your day is communicating with different people, keeping them in the loop. Um, and when tenants often report issues, and it's not the tenants' faults, they just they're not plumbers, or they're not electricians. They might just say send an email saying I need help or shower is broken. But the agent now has to engage in multiple uh, emails or ten minutes, fifteen minutes of the phone. So we're building Mark, which stands for Management Automated Request Bed. And it's an AI driven software, which allows you basically to manage more tenants with less work. Excellent. I love this idea, uh, but it really reminds me of some of the early innovation we saw in PropTech back in maybe 2014 and 15, because actually, or even earlier, back then, almost all of the, what we would genuinely describe as disruptive um, uh, innovation was coming from outside of the industry. So it was generally consumers who'd had a difficulty and who were used to, technology improving their lives in other areas under yeah. like genuinely not understanding how the service could be so poor um so that was really exciting to me um but that was very much um an early stage and at that time the industry was very resistant to change like the industry had tools pitched to it and it was saying no we like how we've always done things we love our excel spreadsheets we like <laughs> uh, you know, we had one particular guy who would actually take a photocopy of the paper diary. He'd come into the office in the morning, take a photocopy of the paper diary and oh. then go out for his day. And if anything changed in between time, it had to be scribbled in. And that <laughs> system, he was using that system until very recently. Probably despite, still using it. <laughs> well, despite all of the tools and technology. So, um, look, I, I've been very vocal in the past to say certainly there was a time when solutions were available problems were identified and the industry became a problem in itself. They resisted change. Thankfully, we are well past that. And we have been for, you know, eight eight years now um, or there about seven, eight years. So that's really positive. Um, But the challenges still exist. And in fact, it feels, if anything, the challenges have have maybe evolved with uh, the proliferation of technology now because people have an expectation of how they want to be able to deal with somebody. So say for your mother, like what was the point of frustration? Was it not having the the heating or uh, in, in the building for a week or was it not being able to speak to a human to know if the problem had been heard and was going yeah. to be addressed? 
Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of things. I suppose one of the main ones was probably the heating itself. But outside of that, like if we do have a shortage of contracts and stuff, so that is going to take a couple of days, which is completely fine. But it's as a property management company or as a letting agent, it's kind of how you how you handle that. And in an ideal world, a tenant will have an issue, they'll ring you or they'll send you an email, and you'll write straight back to them, and you'll be able to offer them you know, any solutions they need, and hopefully those some of those solutions can help them. Or if not, you can summarize all the information and give it straight to your contractor, and you can speed the process up really quickly. The only issue is like it's not very realistic, especially with the amount of tenants and units you have. And so some tenants are unfortunately forgotten about. And I'm, I have to say, like I've met some of the nicest and hardest working people are property managers. And it's like ninety nine percent of them are great people. It's just you might get the odd, the odd incident where a tenant is forgotten about, and it, it definitely happens. So different systems, like you talked about, which are definitely agents have more of an appetite to introduce. I feel um, it's definitely a turning point for the industry. With that said, though, there is still a lot of like one 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 of our, one of our customers, um, remember she was showing me she manages a few hundred tenants, and she was showing us. When the first time we had a call, she had this pink book and she was like, everything goes through the book. And she said it was her first time coming on to like a new system. And she's really excited to come on board. And yeah, it's just funny to see that like while the change is there and it's so good to see them actually adopted. I couldn't imagine 10 years ago they were trying to introduce similar solutions because I just don't think it would have maybe got as, as adopted as it is today. Yeah, but I suppose we have to look at the margins across the industry as well. And always when we're looking at tech adoption, we're, we're considering that. And actually... Um, I think that maybe people outside of the industry have a bit of a misconception around this and they, they think that the margins for a sales transaction will be much higher than it is for rentals, yeah. whereas actually the consistency of business has meant that actually all, a lot of the early prop tech innovation that was designed but also adopted was on the lettings and management side of things because actually yeah. that's where the that's where technology can really address consistent problems um, and it's where you've got scale and repeatability and all the things that technology is really good at, at addressing and um, tell me Aaron what were you studying in college at the time so I was studying marketing in TUD and industry so completely unrelated um, I always wanted to like start business and get involved I always tried in school and then I'd worked in another startup for the last 10 months not related to prop tech um, called the Lennox Academy and I learned so, so much there and it was such a good like learning curve for me and the guys there were so helpful and it taught me a lot about like the ups and downs and like one day you're top of the world, next day you're not, but it's this, it's this consistent cycle of, it's the same, it's not just in prop tech, it's the same for letting agents and estate agents when you feel like you're top of the world, but it's the same with sort of all business owners. So yeah, studying marketing um, in college. Yeah. Do you know, marketing is not unrelated at all. In fact, what is the business of a state agency <laughs> only marketing uh, a property and then getting the right people in and then keeping those keeping the right people in? So actually, marketing is a massive part of, of the job of any property uh, yeah. property professional. So actually, I don't think that's unrelated at all. But I, I think it's really interesting. And in fact, I love your approach uh, to market research because I'm sure as you're going through the startup journey, and it is required that we call it a journey because that's the language we've all agreed yeah. to use. Yeah. And I think anybody who has spent a couple of years in it, they start to cringe when they hear the word journey. They hate it they, because it, it, yeah. it, 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 is a, it becomes a really loaded term. But yeah. to be honest, it does kind of describe the process that's happening. But, Definitely. So through this startup process, you will have heard a lot, you know, about, um, I, I suppose, validating the problem, market research. And, and one of the phrases that's commonly used is to get out of the building. So and yeah. really getting out of the building is not just about talking to people outside of your own circle, but it's about, um, you know, to, to test. Is, is this a problem I have? Is this a problem other people have? Um, mm -hmm. But actually, it's, it's a really important precursor to see if how you are planning first of all is there a problem and um, that that goes beyond me and my situation but also uh is has the solution that i think will work is that the one that will work for the vast majority of people um who have this problem and that's where the product market fit comes in and timing plays a huge part of that so when you were speaking to people uh when you were supposed to be work on reception um in the gym i hope they're not listening in today but when you were speaking to people did you learn about not just did they have the same problem you had. Did you learn about other problems that tenants have? Mm, yes, the, definitely a frustration. A frustration of theirs was just the, the lack of consistent communication. I'd say it was the biggest problem. There's, there's definitely, um, 
I think it's kind of two ways to look at it. When you talk to a property manager or some property managers, they try to give the tenants the best experience they can. Whereas sometimes with a tenant, it makes complete sense when they're paying like really high rents. They want sort of everything yesterday is a slogan you'll hear, which is very fair. Um, so it's, it's a very tricky one to try and find out what's the solution you can introduce that will significantly help the tenants' lives, but also dramatically help the agents' lives. And, uh, and this is one that definitely sort of overlaps, whereas ones that will help um, more so the agent might not be as, um, what's the word, maybe like beneficial instantly to the, the agent as opposed to the tenants. But it's definitely a whole whole list of problems, but this is the one that I, I'd sort of set out after my mom and family had the issue and was like, this seems really, really solvable. Um, and like, it's to date, it's, it's been really solvable. Like we've, we've had uh, such a big demand last week. We had just taken like a sample size of, of tenants. We'd say like, take a hundred tenants and um, the industry standard, new, not as better than I do, but it's around 10% of your tenants will need attention year round. So if you take a hundred, that'd be 10 in a week or a month. And looking at a hundred with one firm that we're working with, we had 11 conversations from start to finish and seven tickets were logged. So that means that Mark was able to help the tenants all 36% of the tickets, which is four tickets. And it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but those four tickets could have been three, four, five, six emails, or they could have been 10, 15 minutes over the phone. And that's only on the agent side. It's not or at the tenant side. It's not to think about the landlord and contractor it comes that needs to happen after. So when the agent has the ticket, they then need to go and inform the landlord and contractor manually, which Mark now does for them, which is definitely a big, big help for them facilitating those conversations. Um, I, problem solving is usually uh, one of the core attributes of an entrepreneur. You know, you, you see things that can be done in a better way. So problem solving is definitely a core piece. But I think maybe uh, even having that marketing background um, perhaps gives you a better understanding about things like uh, yeah. consumer experience. So the experience that the tenant will have. So, yes, you're looking at uh, streamlining a, a process for efficiency within a commercial organization but actually to do it in a way that the tenants won't feel the same frustration that your mother did um, yeah. in dealing with that so in terms of the ux like is there is there a battle are, are those opposing are those opposing forces so trying to get the right consumer experience but in a way that really is increasing the efficiency for the the managing agent are they opposing forces or do they work quite well like can can you marry them Yes, it's you definitely can marry them, but it's a, a real challenge to marry them. And that's why I feel like you see a lot of prop tech companies come into the space here. Like you do, and you often see like I'll meet agents and they'll say another company doing something in Leddings. And it's like, yeah, but listen, we're, we're a little bit different this time. So I definitely think it is, it's definitely possible to marry them, but it is slightly hard to marry them because priorities for both groups are quite, um, maybe not different, but like there's a lot going on for, for each group. Um, and I, th I think you're dead, right, you're dead right about the market research and like that background in, in marketing and, even in the startup I would work in, just asking those questions, like this doesn't exist, just like endless curiosity is like something you, you definitely should always have, I think. Um, it, like it, it, whatever you're doing, especially if it's any sort of prop tech or any other sort of tech startup company. Um, and, and it's just educating the consumer too. So it's like when they when we go into someone and they're like, oh, ChatGPT, is this ChatGPT? And they point that we're giving a demo and it's like, no, 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 it's not. <laughs> because you, you want to try and like, because you want to try and build something that's that's unique. And we'll probably touch on it in a bit. So you had a really good conversation with Ed uh, last week on, on like technology side of things. And I really enjoyed that conversation. It's, you're, you're building a, a, an AI agent for yourself as well, are you? That's an amateur one. We're using HeyGen. Uh, we actually set our producer, Katie, the task because she hosts the, the TikTok channel. We actually set it the task of training her own yeah. uh, avatar and AI and so actually, at some point in the future, I, I was mentioning there that um, I'm hoping to be surprised by having a conversation with Katie that isn't actually Katie at all. And so the test will be at of, of what point we do this, that I'll know the difference or not know the difference. But actually, um, some of the uh, some of the solutions out there are much further advanced, actually, than we had realized. Some of the capabilities are much better and um yeah, it, it's definitely something we're exploring because I think it's really interesting. And if if we can use it to tell the stories of what agents are doing, maybe agents can use it in another way. So, yeah, we, we, we can't we can't uh, critique something unless we've tried it and we can't really uh, talk about the potential of something unless we're actually willing to spend the time actually working with the technology and seeing what can happen. So, yeah, it's you know, what? it comes back to that curiosity. We were yeah. curious about it. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And it's 
it's really good to see and like the timing piece we talked about it before earlier on the call and even like with with ipav who have been so great to us like the, the timing of of everything and how it works out and this new emerging technology being so prevalent and people realizing it's like the advantages of it and um, but yeah it's really it's really interesting to see that like what what is out there and what solutions are out there and um, what you want so it's more prop tech th- th- this, this podcast there's one thing I, I really wanted to talk about it was um there's a guy called Aravind Srivanas he's the CEO of a company called Perplexity and they're big in the AI space like over in Silicon Valley and he I read a lot of and listen to a lot of his stuff and he makes such a good point for anyone working on any new technology and stuff and it's that AI can be a part of your solution but it can't be your solution if that makes sense so internally, we have AI broken, or Mark, the product, broken in, into two really simple components. It's AI and then the Mark platform. And basically, Mark platform is obviously just everything outside the AI. And like contrary to what people might believe, we'll spend 99% of our time building around the Mark platform. Um, and the reason being is because tomorrow, if we pull AI from our product, we, we still think believe it will have users paying and using our product because AI is just a, a tool to help you make the product better. It isn't the product which is something I've seen a lot of like different, even prop tech companies that I reach out and I, and I chat chat with them. It's it's like at the start, you could definitely try and be a rapper or you could use like some chat GBT technology, but it's, at some point you need to be able to really have some enterprise value in your solution. Um, and that's one thing that agents like, really, really like about us. And it's like, it's not it's not like that that technology that you could just look up on your phone and, and it yeah. helps in the other ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it's really interesting. Um, I love the way you've articulated that. Uh, and I, I I love hearing about uh, thought leaders in different spaces b- because actually this is so new. I always feel there are no experts. There can be no experts yet. So I'm always really interested to hear what people are saying and those who are brave enough to speak out at an early enough stage when there are no experts and actually to share their views, knowing that they may be right, they may be wrong. Um, so actually perplexity, I hadn't heard that, of that as a as um, a company yet, but I, I really like the idea of AI being part of the solution, but it can't be the solution because actually that's exactly, I haven't heard it articulated that well, but that's exactly what people are finding out. Yeah, yeah, and it's something you quickly learn. And like, from when I started to where we are now, we're we're a team of four now, and and our head of AI is a PhD in machine learning, has been involved with startups, and he was a a natural language processing engineer at Adapt Research Center, which is just fancy jargon for Adapt is one of the AI leading AI research centers in in Ireland, and Europe maybe, but he knows so much about it, and it's so good. I think it's really important when you are trying, like building these products, you're going to places that haven't been gone to before. So it's like, who are the people who are like phenomenal? Like he's so he's such a massive addition to the team. And it's like, who are the people we can bring in to make this uh our desired outcome or what we believe to be the future happen better and more efficiently? And by bringing people like him in who who know the way and know the path, it's a massive help. And yeah, definitely. Like there's um I went to did you go to the AI conference by any chance a few months back in uh, Dublin? No, I didn't, but there was a fantastic lineup and I and I, I should have gone because there was a fantastic lineup. It was really interesting. What were yeah. your highlights from there? So oh, so many. There was one in particular. Um I I don't know him now. I follow him on LinkedIn and he's he offers so much like insight into AI law and infringement and data protection. Uh, Barry Scannell is his name. I think he's he's with uh William Fry, but he's, he does a lot in terms of I think representing um, different organizations within Ireland and on a European scale for creating these laws because like it's, it's so new that they, they don't exist and it's the same when like you hear the arguments or the people discuss social media 10 years ago there was no rules to police any of that mm-hmm. and so I think different countries and different organizations are doing a really good job now in setting up these guide rails and these, these boundaries kind of early on which will definitely just help uh, speed up everything for everyone I think. Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely that particular conference. There was, um, I, I know there was some really interesting things coming out of that, and I, I suppose one of the maybe more disappointing things around the potential growth or the center of excellence that Ireland could become, the center of innovation, mm-hmm. is actually our lack of digital infrastructure and our appetite to allow that to grow like through our data centers uh, moratorium and things you know these are things that actually could limit the growth so i I don't know if there's a a good enough understanding uh, at a political level and at a policy level that actually if we don't allow data centers come in and allow them help solve the problem in terms of the introduction of renewables at scale which they're willing to do um that actually we might be able to use ai through apps on our phone but we won't have the capacity to be able to 
develop it and actually become leaders uh, in, in the way that we could be because the appetite's there and a lot of the knowledge base is there. The cur- curiosity for sure is there. And yeah. actually, I, I don't know, uh, there seems to be a disconnect at a political uh, and policy level that actually how it, critical that important infrastructure is. Um, in all of our government documents, we talk, we point to innovation as being yeah. a solution. We like to think of ourselves as, as an innovative country yet not understanding that actually not having a dig- not having the correct digital infrastructure for scaling um mm. w- will kill the real the real innovation that that could happen where the value is created so it's such an own goal it feels like yeah. an own goal politically but look <laughs> I, I don't want to take us off track today when i know we have limited time that's my fault, sorry that's my fault. <laughs> no 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 but you're absolutely right and it's something i i feel that we do need to, and actually by the way i think it's something that maybe uh, startups and and scaling companies in this space definitely need to be more politically motivated. They need to be feeding more into policymaking because actually, um, you know, it's even like during when the data center moratorium, I remember, was being uh, debated initially um, I, I because we were at early stages of COVID as well. There was such an irony, the fact that all of this was happening online and via Zoom and Teams call, and such an irony of not understanding that we're having this conversation enabled yeah. by the data infrastructure yeah. that we have. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it, it, it's just a really poor, you know, I, I, I think yeah. the tech industry needs to become much better advocates and needs to be much more robust in terms of helping the general public who who actually vote for politicians, who feed into policy making to help people understand it. Um, I, I don't think that tech and and what we need in terms of di- digital infrastructure can continue to operate in in the series of silos that it has been doing. Actually, technology uh, in, um, impacts how all citizens live yes. their daily lives. So actually in the same way that all citizens have a democratic right to contribute um, their say in terms of infrastructure like roads and yeah. schools and hospitals that actually our data infrastructure is just as critical, albeit invisible. I couldn't agree more. And I think I agree so much with what you said there about the scale-ups and startups educating the, their, their customers or even the people because those customers are those people that they speak, the startups and scale-ups educate and speak to are the people who are ultimately going to go and vote for the people who will help exactly. put the in place for the data infrastructure, which will put us as the leaders, I feel, Hopefully that we should or can be at least. You know, I, and it is sometimes just a case of stepping back and looking at the holistic situation and understanding that everything is connected. And in fact, in the digital age, it should be so much easier for us to, to understand that um, yeah. uh, the connectedness and, our, and the interconnectedness. And so to me, uh, enabling and not resisting our digital infrastructure that will allow the growth of Ireland, for me, I think it's equally important for urban and for rural Ireland. And actually, I see it as a root of good citizenship. So. Definitely. It, it goes to the very core. But look, uh, that that's more of a, a rant that, than yeah. helpful information today. I'm conscious that we are limited on time, but yeah. I would like for, say, letting agents um, or managing agents who are lis- listening in today, um, mm. I'm not sure that we've actually explained what mm. Mark is and what yeah. Mark does. So, yeah. you know, if you're sitting down and introducing this as an entirely new concept to... Yeah. Uh, a managing agent that's you know managing two and a half thousand properties across yeah. uh, any city uh, in Ireland. Mm. How do you how do you describe it, and what benefits can you show that it brings? Yeah, one hundred percent. So it's really it's really 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 simple. So Mark is a platform that tenants will log on to when they want to log an issue. So when a tenant logs an issue traditionally, they will fill out a request form. They will write an email or make a phone call. The problem with these methods is when you fill out a request form, you'll just put in like the I need help I mentioned before or shower not working. Or when it's uh, an email, you'll go back and forth. You'll say, hey, not working. And the ten- agent will have to say, hey, where whereabouts is the house? She's like, main road. Well, where on main road? 10 main road. So there's a lot of this unnecessary back and forth communication that we feel could just be completely gotten rid of. And that's mm-hmm. what we've seen largely with the agents that have come on board to use it. So really simply in terms of a flow of how it works, I'm a tenant and I have my phone and I'll go on to Mark and I'll say, shower not working. Mark will then ask me a series of qualifying questions, gather the make and model of my shower and from our database, be able to pull solutions or scrape the web for a real time user manual. 
And so if I'm describing that my Triton T90 has low water pressure, Mark will be able to, if you can't find it in our database, go and check online. Much because uh, the reason we built that uh, real-time feature was because we've seen a lot of agents have sat in agents' offices and they spend 15 to 20 minutes looking for user manuals. And we're like, there has to be a better way. So any way that we can just inf- like even educate the tenants and just say, hey, yeah, completely hear you. Try this solution. And then if it works, that's a ticket that the agent hasn't had to spend time communicating with the tenant, landlord, and contractor. And it's mm-hmm. never just like, one email around or one phone call. It's multiple. It always is. And so it could cost, like, it depends on the ticket and the severity of the issue, but it ends up costing agents traditionally a lot of time. So once tenant logs an issue, Mark will ask some qualifying questions, offer some solutions. If it's not possible that the issue can't be fixed, Mark will then summarize it for the, the agent. The agent then has a, like, we call it a one-click process. So if they think, okay, yeah, no, my plumber should see this, it's sent to the pre-approved contractor on file. The reason we built it like so was because when I was interviewing the property managers and at the time I was like, did these guys all know each other? But then I was like, oh no, maybe the problem's just that big. But all the property managers had described the exact same system, just in different wording. It was an automated maintenance request system that could send their pre-approved contractor on file and notify everyone in, in between. Um, and centralizing and logging everything is a big thing for disputes and stuff down the line and just making sure there's no of things. So yeah, sorry, it's taking this long to explain what Mark is, but sorry, if, and if anyone is- No, it, 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 that's not a long explanation at all. I, I actually want uh, agents to know how it will make their lives easier and how it will improve the experience of their mm-hmm. tenants because that's something that genuinely wasn't a huge consideration a decade ago. It's absolutely a huge consideration today. We want our, our, our tenants right now are paying massive rents they expect a good level of service. We want to be able to deliver a good level of service. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Kyle. And some of the so so we're working with some of like the biggest players in the Irish residential market right now. And one one for for in particular you manage a couple of thousand properties have told us about the the importance of in, increasing tenant engagement and te- tenant uh, experience from from the top. Like it's it's not it's no more just the tenants saying oh can we have a better experience it's everyone within these organizations saying we actively need to start introducing solutions that can give these tenants a much better experience um and yeah like it's it's really good we're really happy with it and if anyone does want to learn learn more about it they can go on to markprop.com and you can uh, m a r c p or o p dot uh, com um, and you can be a part of uh, our our first group to get to get started our first couple of groups. Fantastic. Well, I, I, as I mentioned already, you already have significant market traction, probably more than I can think of any prop tech coming into the marketplace, um, certainly yeah. to my knowledge. So congratulations to you. And that's that's us answering the questions, uh, you answering the questions for the agents. Before we finish up, I always like to to make sure we're adding value to the founders who are on the same treadmill, maybe a little bit further ahead or a little bit behind uh, where you are right now. And just, mm. um, you know, the the market traction you've gotten has been genuinely phenomenal in a short space of time. So mm. um, what insights can you share with founders who, again, might be a little bit ahead or a little bit behind in their journey? Uh, the company so far is a bootstrapped. Yeah. Th- yes. So we're, we're completely bootstrapped now. We have paying, we have revenue, we have paying customers. Um because of all the traction you just touched on there, it's very nice words of you. Um, and yeah, it's just the, the, over the next couple of months, we really want to try and, and grow the team. And it's it's not just because I heard a great thing you today. First time founders brag about how many employees they have. Second time founders brag about how few employees they have. And <laughs> I thought it was really good. And it sort of had me think because the demand is so, so big for the product that we're building right now and, and the, the proprietary tech that we've we've been really fortunate to build with the team that we have. And we've been approached by some some single family offices uh, only recently in Dublin, and and even a couple of months ago we got uh, term sheets from other investors and, and stuff. So it's there's definitely a lot, a lot there. And the ethos of, of say that single family office, for example, they have a huge property holding. So those those sort of relationships are definitely ones that we want to try and cultivate and and be be part of and, and grow together with, with those guys. And um, so there's and it's, we're not like going out to try and see it. it's really good that people are recognizing like we're making so much noise and traction and um, that people are re- in this in the space who have domain expertise are reaching out to us which is really really good and we're really grateful for it um and over the next few months we want to just try and grow 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 uh focus on the product a lot of founders as a prop tech podcast a lot of founders i feel might get razzle dazzled by meeting different investors or like the whole thing of 
like a lot of people celebrate fundraising, which is not something you should do. You should celebrate as building a good product, which solves a problem. And um, so we're trying to spend a lot of our time on just speaking to customers, building a product, speaking to customers. And it's that iteration of just that, how, how can we reduce that feedback, that, that loop, that cycle? Um, so yeah, just really trying to make the product a, a lot better. Um, in terms of insights to, to other founders, I'd say just um, just definitely keep persisting with it. Like me and you were only chatting earlier about it, about like coming into the industry as someone with not a lot of domain expertise. I would have told people about the idea and, and it got laughed off a good few times. Like in person, people would say, that's never going to work. Give it up now. If you want something to work on, I'll give you something. And it's like, okay. And, and yeah, you definitely have to ask why. Um, and the best, if you're, especially if you're speaking to people with experience, the best people with experience or the people you want to work with are the ones who'll say, listen, that won't work, but go down this route. Um, because it's so constructive, especially when it's something you haven't done before. Um, and yeah, like if anyone does want to have a chat about Mark or is new in the prop tech space, like you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to meet people or even people in the space. Um, and again, markprop.com if you want to learn more about the product. Um, Aaron, final question. Uh, yeah. In all my interactions with you, I've genuinely found you to be one of the most impressive early stage founders that that I've come oh. across and not exclusively in the prop tech space. So I I want to understand and, and I, I wonder if you can can even articulate, but um the rental market in Ireland is is absolutely beleaguered. The problems are too many to count. Um so actually we could have we could have a hundred more of you coming in targeting different problems uh, across yeah. the rental the rental sector. And that's the reality and it's not exclusive to Ireland. Mm -hmm. So many people um understand they see and they experience the challenges we have and the problems we have across the rental market you turned that into a business opportunity what's the what what takes you from seeing that problem to thinking you can address this yeah so from from say when my my mom had issued to like where we are now maybe um excuse me so definitely a lot of a lot of speaking to people um and, and speaking to the right people, because you can spend all day speaking to people, but they, they might be pushing you in the wrong direction. I think it's the endless curiosity we spoke about earlier. It's asking the right questions. And it's like a good clue to know how to speak, to know who the right people to speak to are, are like, what are you trying to build? And it's like, okay, we're trying to build a software that's AI related um, and it caters to letting agents and property managers. It's like, cool, there's three or four different groups of people that I can each approach and, and, and bend, bends off my idea to. See how they feel about it. See what they think about it. And um, there's a great book called The Mom's Test, which is like I'm sure you you know about it, but it's like it's always in the startup tech world. It's it's talked about, and it's like when you have an idea. First of all, the whole concept of the premise of the book is you'll go to your mom and you'll be like, "Mom, is my idea great?" She'll be like, "Yeah, well done. It's a really good idea." And then you you run away and you're like, "Yes." But I feel like it's not even just your mom. It's oftentimes like I'll be at an event or someone, someone come to me, or I'll be chat chatting to someone, and it's like. I'm not their customer. They'll be building Airbnb for dog minders. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And and like they go away and they're like, yes, my idea is validated. But it really isn't until you say, like, like you said so well, get out of the building, speak to the customers. So I'd say that's the biggest thing. If I, like if you are starting out with anything, just as much point of contact as you can get with your customers. Like I have WhatsApp groups set, set up with the property managers in some of these places. And I'm sure at this stage, they're sick of me when I ring into it and I text into it. I'm like, guys, 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 guys. Because it's that constant communication that you need to build a really good product. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. And actually, that's maybe one of the areas where PropTech is a really exciting space because actually, if as an innovator, you can get access to the managing agents, the managing agents generally have close relationships with the tenants, with yeah. the with the providers. So I, I, the tradespeople coming in as well, you know, they have those relationships. That's what estate and letting agents do really really well so yeah. actually if you can come in and leverage their relationships with your technology if, if that's where you see the real power and the transformative power of what we can truly describe as disruptive um in, in the innovation space so thank you so much for being so generous with your time today i think it's really exciting what you're doing um and so to you and to the rest of the team at mark um Congratulations on what you've done so far, but it's definitely lots done, lots to do. So um, there's a great offering there. Hopefully more and more uh, uh, managing and letting agents will be, will contact you to get involved at an early stage. Your market traction has been genuinely phenomenal. So and I, I know you have a good system of uh, incorporating the feedback that you're getting from early customers to make sure that that's shaping your pipeline of innovation into the future. And that's something I'm 
really looking forward to seeing. So, um, Aaron, th thank you so much. I genuinely appreciate you being so generous with your time and so open uh, with the innovation so far. Best of luck to you and your team. Um, I genuinely have enjoyed chatting to you today and look forward to seeing what you do next. You too, um, I, I want to say I really appreciate the time. If anyone as well is in the prop tech space and does want to like learn any more, Carol and Katie and the whole team, like, they're, they're the guys you need to speak to. They're so generous to their time um, and they really offer a lot. And again, uh, if anyone want to learn about Mark, um, markprop.com or you can even message me on LinkedIn. And thanks uh, again for coming, Carol. Really appreciate uh, it. No, my, my absolute pleasure. I think it's really exciting and you're definitely one to watch. Um, my thanks to producer Katie Tallon and to the audio team at Hear Me Roar Media. Before we go, just a special word of thanks to our sponsor, PropTech Ireland, for supporting the podcast and for making these conversations possible. And finally, thank you indeed for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of the PropTech Hot Seat. In the meantime, please be sure to check out all of the other Irish and international real estate and construction shows here on iPropertyRadio.com.